on the Kinnikinick River, the, the lower part uh, down by the harbor. Kinnikinick River is one of the three uh, main rivers in the Milwaukee area, and over 80% of it is cement lined or storm sewers. And there's now a large project to uh, update the flood control and also rehabilitate the stream. Dave, could you tell me a little bit about the history of the Kinnikinick River? Uh, I'd be glad to. Uh, the, the river is, this river has a watershed of about 25 square miles, 90% of it's urbanized. It's experienced flooding in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Uh, there was some concrete lining put in in the 60s to alleviate that flooding because at that time flood management was basically a conveyance solution where they would pass the water down to the lake as fast as possible. In the 80s, there was another additional flooding. At that time, sewer pack came in and redid a design which removed some of the bridges. Uh, the fact there was an auto bridge behind us that it was replaced with a pedestrian bridge and that also helped to alleviate some of the flooding that we had. Uh, in recent years, Sewer Pack has come back and looked at the modeling that we have on this uh, river and we now have additional 350 homes at flood risk. The conveyance channel behind us can no longer handle the flows for the 1% probability flood or the 100 year flood as some people like to call it. And the sewage district is coming in to do a flood management project and in addition to that we're going to do some stream rehabilitation. And you'll notice I use the term rehabilitation, I don't use the term restoration because uh, it's my belief, particularly in these urban settings, that we can't do a complete restoration project, but we can give the stream back some of its function, which is more in line with a rehabilitation project. Pat, as, as being the, the oversight engineer for the projects, what's been some of the limitations in combining engineering and stream rehabilitation? Well, a lot of it has to do with the constraints that we have on the, on the side. So you look up and down, this channel right here and you can see that the houses are right up against the uh, right up against the channel but you also have the, the infrastructure the sewer infrastructure that's also right up against the channel so uh, if you want to expand out you try and uh, work either work around that or you have to move that infrastructure which can become very costly so Oh, I think with, with having a cement line channel, one of the limitations have been fish passage and then also just in terms of uh, structures that they have to jump over, but then also the width of the channel that it's too shallow for fish to pass through. So is there sure. something in the designs that are you can keep the flood control but still add the little habitat to help the right. fish and do that? In the upcoming uh, designs, the, the rehabilitated channel designs that we have, we'll have a low flow channel section within there and it'll have a, a fall wig within that. Uh, so even during low flows, the fish should have uh, enough, enough coverage there to be able to make, make it upstream and also install pool and ripple sections throughout that rehab section so that uh, the fish can have a, a break in, in these little pool sections as well. If I could just add to that, um, the channel currently is, has a top width of about 50 to 60 feet. We're going to expand that top width to about 200 feet, with the low flow channel being between 6 and 10 feet. Uh, to do that, we of course have to acquire a lot of the properties on either side of the river. That, in, in this case, it's going to be 80 to 100 homes will have to be acquired, knocked down, and then we'll expand that channel. This required a lot of public input. This is not something easily done in most municipalities. It's a loss of tax base, uh, relocation of, uh, of citizens that have lived here for a long time. So. We had a series of meetings, about two years of public meetings, to get to the point where we are now, where we're just completing the preliminary engineering. We'll go to design in about a year and a half, and then we should begin construction in two to three years. So what are, I was down a couple of weeks ago, down um, below where the, the cement lining ends, and there were some fish waiting to come up and that couldn't make it up over into the, into the cement line portion. That's what, correct. Uh, what fish would use this once, uh, the cement is taken out. Well, when the concrete's removed, this river does connect in with Milwaukee Harbor and it's connected to Lake Michigan. We have a large transplanted salmonid population and we also have some native trout that will use this stream to come up the river. They unfortunately will not be able to spawn here because there will be no spawning habitat for them, but they will come up the river as they would during their migrations to spawn, but again, they won't be able to spawn. We also hope that this will become a forage base for other species such as walleye, smallmouth bass, northern pike. In fact, the target species for this river, I believe, is the northern pike, and if we can get that fish to move freely up and down the river, that would be uh, something that would make other fish passage much very possible. But again, they will not use this for all their life stages, but they will forage in this area for 
foods and other things. I think that I thought, saw in the design plans there was also more room for humans to, to use the area around the channel. Is there plans for more paths? And Correct. We're standing on a path now that runs along the top bank of the channel. When we are completed, there will be a path, a maintenance path, on the bottom that will also be available to pedestrians, bikes, and, uh, and individuals. But it will also be used for maintaining. Whatever we put in will have to be maintained. We'll have a bioengineered channel, like uh, Pat said, with a low flow channel. That will have to be maintained. Debris that gets into the channel will have to be removed because we'll still be connected to that 25 mile urban watershed and various materials do tend to wash into this channel and have to be removed. So what's the, the general feeling about the, the work that's planned here with the, the residents and the general public? I think that's a real important point to bring up. Uh, if you look at the channel the way it is now, a lot of these people view this almost like an open sewer. They don't really see it as a resource. They see it as a threat from flooding and they just see it as an open sewer. When we're, what we're trying to do through the stream rehabilitation projects that we do is make people think of this as a resource, to actually add value to their neighborhood. In addition to the planning and the preliminary engineering that we've done, we've done a neighborhood plan that's going to help revitalize this neighborhood and using the channel project as a catalytic project to redevelop the neighborhood, get new housing perhaps in here, get new development to, to come into this area once we've improved the aesthetics of the area.